Hi, uh, this is Coach Brian um, from the National Free Flight Society in partnership with Science Olympiad National to demonstrate the rubber band motor winding procedure for the 2023-24 flight event, uh, typical rubber band. So quick intro on me and then we'll get right to it. I've coached four school districts in mid-Michigan, 18 to 20 students. We do over a thousand test flights per year. In the last 11 years I've been doing this, we've been state champions seven times and medalists 19 times. So this procedure I'm going to show you is the same exact procedure my teams use and um, it's very successful with it and it's pretty standard too. Uh, in my observations as an event supervisor and coach in many competitions over the last uh, 11 years, I'd say 95% of teams do not wind using this procedure completely. So if your team is not using this process of winding the rubber band, you're not getting full energy into the rubber band and you're not collecting data that allows you to pred uh, accurately predict the climb height of the airplane to protect it and to test uh, strategically. Um, this is the number one thing you can do to improve if you're not doing this. More than the de design of the airplane, more than almost anything else. Uh, this procedure is not difficult. Most students that I teach uh, by the 8th or ninth or maybe 10th time they've done a winding, they pretty much have it. Um, winding with a torque meter, which is what I'm going to do, is very important. Very important. If the team has limited funds, I would say spend less on the airplane kit and get the torque meter and use it. Without the torque meter, you can't collect reliable data that will allow you to predict the climb height of the airplane or do really any data analysis on which rubber band, any good data analysis on which rubber band density or width is going to be most effective or turn count or launch torque or anything. Um, the number one step is to tie a good knot in the rubber band and there'll be a link in the video that shows that. Um, the number two step is to use an equation, the equation or the calculator that's linked in the comments of the video um, in the information section of the video to um, predict or determine the number of turns a motor will take before it breaks. So the, the turn count on a rubber band is based on the thickness, width, and length. And uh, really it's based on density. So this motor is 11.8 inches or 0.058 grams per inch which is approximately 0.087 inches in width, which should be a medium range rubber band for this year's event. Weighs 1.49 grams with two black rubber O-rings uh, that weigh 0.09 grams. It, the calculator equation shows us this will take 1600 turns before it breaks, which is 107 winder turns because the winder I'm using is a 15 to one ratio winder. So the first step in winding is to lubricate the motor. So most people will do this process where they're using a Ziploc bag. Armorel Original Protectant is the most popular lubricant. You can also use silicone shock oil um, for radio control cars. Spray about three quick sprays into the bottom of the bag. Then massage the rubber band lubricant into the rubber band thoroughly. And we use a paper towel to store the rubber band. Some people use the black bags. Um, then it's, you can have a handy thing to drop the motor into and just pat it a couple times because you don't need it dripping wet. Then the O-ring that is closest to the knot on the motor. It may be a little difficult to see, but you understand there's an mm -hmm. O-ring close to the knot is going to be hooked on the torque meter hook and the other o-ring is going to be attached to the winder and then <clears throat> you can stretch this motor six to seven times its relaxed length the motor is about 12 inches so we're going to stretch it to six feet and a little more actually so i'm going to use my feet to paste this off because they're about 12 inches long so that's two feet three feet, four feet, five feet, six feet. And I'm gonna go a little farther because this is the third use of this rubber band and the motor will take a little bit more stress after the third use. Seems really tight. This 
uh, tan super sport rubber um, can be stretched 10 times its relaxed length before it breaks once it's broken in. So I'm going to wind to um, about 90% of the projected breaking turns when I'm completely finished. Breaking turns are 1600, so I'm going to wind in winder turns to about 90. Um, that's close to 85-90% of 107, 85% actually. Um, the lubricant you saw was Armorall, original formula. Do not use petroleum-based lubricants like WD-40 that will break down the rubber. It's not effective. Um, the <clears throat> first time you wind a rubber motor, you might wind to 80% of braking turns. Second time, maybe 85% and the third use maybe 90% or more. So this is the third use of this motor, so that's why I'm going to 85%, which is a little conservative. So phase one of the winding process is to wind about 50 to 60% of the target turns at full stretch. And that's also about 50 to 60% of the torque. So for me, that's about 60 winder turns and about 0.8 inch ounces at full stretch. So this is full stretch. My goal is 60 winder turns and 0.8 inch ounces on the torque meter. So I'm going to wind that up quickly. Normally I wouldn't stop here, I would just immediately transition into the next phase, which is walking in towards the torque meter while I'm winding, but I wanted to talk a little bit. So that's 60 winder turns and it's about 0.8 inch ounces. So the second phase of winding, oh and the objective of winding in the first phase and the whole process is torque, not turns. Turns are a reference. Some motors will take a few more, some motors will take a few less. So 60 was about my target, but the real thing I'm shooting for is the torque of 0.8 inch ounces. And my final uh, result that I'm looking for is about 1.2 to 1.3 inch ounces, which will take about 30 more winder turns to get to. So the walking in phase is phase two of winding, and the objective of phase two walking in is as you take a step, torque will go down. And you can, you can experiment with that and just see what happens. As you wind, torque will go up. So if you regulate the walking in pace rate with the winding rate, you can have the torque very gradually increase to about one inch ounce as you walk in. The very last phase, I'll tell you now so that I can do it without talking while we're finishing winding the motor, is the last few turns. The last few turns, you'll walk in just a little faster and you'll wind just a little slower so you can control the rapid increase of torque uh, at the very end of the winding process. You'll also see I'm going to finish winding with the motor about eight inches long. So I want the motor to be shorter than the hook-to-hook -hook distance on the airplane, which our airplane has a 10-inch motor stick, so the hook-to-hook -hook is about nine inches. So I want to finish with the motor eight inches long. So my next objective here is to get up to 1.2 to 1.3 inch ounces. And I'm going to read the torque meter uh, readings to you and not count the turns, so you'll know what the torque meter readings are as I'm moving in. So that's 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 0 0.95, 1, 1.1, 1.2, 1.25. So that's a complete winding. Um, you saw how I slowed down. So you have three nonlinear processes to keep track of while you're winding. The rate of the winder crank turning, the rate of walking in, and the rate of the torque meter torque increase. And after eight or ten times practicing this, you should be pretty good. So this is the point where you determine uh, what launch torque you want and how many back-off turns. You're going to count the back-off turns to see how many it takes to get to the launch torque. So a reasonable launch torque for uh, first few flights might be about 0.3 inch ounces, maybe 0.25 or 0.3. It's better to be lower than higher so the airplane doesn't fly up and hit the girders. Um, so these are full, this is what we call full winding, all the way up to within 
80 to 90 percent of max turns and torque and backing off to a launch torque. Before you wind full, you will wind several very low power flights, 30 to 40 percent of max turns, braking turns, just to see the airplane fly level to make sure it's circling correctly, that it's not diving, it's not stalling, and that it looks pretty well trimmed. The trimming video will be a different video. So I'm at 1.3 inch ounces, standing here of course it's dropped, and I'm going to count the back off turns to get it to 0 0.3. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it's already at 0.5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So 15 back off turns and I'm at 0.3. Now is when you'd record your data. So I had about 90 max turns, 15 back off turns, max torque was 1.3, launch torque is 0.3. So you can bring the camera closer now. The next step is to get the rubber band on the airplane. So if you have don't have procedures for this already, if you copy my hand motions exactly, you'll be able to reliably get the motor on the airplane without uh, having any stress. Um, do not have one person hold the airplane and another person put the motor on. You never want two people touching the airplane at the same time. If one person moves one way, the other person moves the other way, then you've broken something. Or it's more difficult to get the motor on with two people, really. Um, if you want two people involved in the event, maybe person one uh, flies the first flight, winds and flies the first flight, person two winds and flies the second flight. So step one is you grab the entire winder with the right hand. Obviously you're left-handed, you could change this, but I wouldn't. So you're holding the winder crank still. Step two, <coughs> excuse me, is you grab the motor behind the O-ring, not on top of the O-ring. And you see I grabbed from the top. I didn't grab from underneath. I grabbed from the top of the motor. You'll see why in a minute. So uh, behind the O-ring means if it starts to slip through your fingers, I need the airplane, so you need to be over here. <laughs> Um, if it, the rubber band starts to slip through your fingers, you have the whole O-ring still exposed so that you can get it hooked onto the airplane correctly. I'm going to pick up the airplane by um, gripping a thumb and forefinger around the propeller, grabbing the nose. The reason for that is I can keep the propeller still and I can keep the hook facing down, the uh, propeller um, shaft hook facing down so that I can hook it onto the motor correctly. And you notice the entire time I'm doing this, my motor is still eight inches long. I'm not getting shorter, longer, shorter, longer. If you do that shorter, longer, shorter, longer thing, you may end up with knot chains sticking out in every direction. So I'm hooking the O-ring on the front hook. Same thing on the back hook. You could have your partner hold the, the motor, the torque meter still, but I can do it with my fingers like that. I have the whole O-ring exposed, and you can guide your finger by touching another the O-ring on by touching another finger to the motor stick, and then everything is nice and still. So then you're ready to fly. Uh, one other thing I didn't mention was during the winding process, during the walk-in phase, you want the winder crank turning continuously. If you take a step and the winder crank is not turning, you won't see any issue at that moment, but when you're completely finished winding, you'll have huge knot chains sticking out in every direction. And knot chains will rub against the motor stick and impede the unwind. If I have a student that's competing and they finish a wind and they realize they have terrible knot chains, I tell them just let it unwind, lubricate the motor, and start over. Because you have enough time, if you do this correctly and you practice, to wind three or four times in the 10 minute competition window. So avoid knot chains, keep the winder crank moving as you're walking in. The other thing I forgot to mention is when the motor is all the way to its shortest stage and it's up to 1.3 inch ounces, don't add more turns. You're done. If you didn't get to your target of 90 or 95 or whatever it is, it doesn't matter. You got to the torque you wanted. If you needed more turns, you wanted more turns, you needed to have gotten them in during an earlier phase of the process. Adding more turns when the motor is really short will break the motor almost 50% of the time, even if you had one turn when you're all the way to the shortest part of the motor uh, winding process. 
So um, one last thing I'll mention is the entire uh, basis for this concept of winding to a high torque and backing off to a launch torque is to take advantage of the motor's property of hysteresis. So you can see I'm about to launch this airplane at 0.3 inch ounces. If I just wound the motor to 0.3 inch ounces, it would take about 600 turns. Now I'm talking rubber band turns. 600 turns to get to 0.3. What I did was I wound it to 1400 turns and then I backed off 225. So now I have 1,200 turns in the motor and it's still at 0.3 inch ounces. So the climb height of an airplane is pretty much a linear relationship to the launch torque. So this, is, this has dramatically more turns on it with this winding process, which is the same winding process that all indoor model airplane people use. And it has the same launch torque. So, <clears throat> The other video you're going to want to look for is the trimming video, which is the initial sequence of flights at low power that you're using to try to uh, get the airplane circling correctly, climbing correctly, center of gravity correct, wing incidence correct, things like that. So that's the winding process you should use. So we'll hopefully see you at competitions. Thanks. Bye.